Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Indian Energy Exchange Limited Q1 FY23 results conference call hosted by Access Capital Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Sumit Kishore from Access Capital Limited. Thank you and over to you, Mr. Kishore. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Access Capital, I'm pleased to welcome you all for the IEX Q1 FI23 earnings conference call. We have with us the management team of IEX, which is represented by Mr. S.N. Goel, Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Vineet Harlanka, Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Rohit Bajaj, Head Business Development, and Ms. Aparna Garg, Lead Investor Relations. We will begin with the opening remarks from Mr. Goel, followed by an interactive Q&A session. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Hello, good afternoon everyone and welcome to the earnings call for quarter 1 FY23. Joining me today are Mr. Vinay Sarlalka, our CFO and company secretary, Mr. Rohit Bajaz, head of the business development, Mr. Amit Kumar, head market operation and new product development, Mr. Swan Gautam, CTO, Mr. Samir Prakash, CHRO, Mr. Inamil Chatterjee, Mr. Parna Gulk, and Mr. Archit Gupta. The pace of Indian economy activity <coughs> continues to remain robust. India witnessed a strong start to the year with the index of industrial production growth at 6.7% year on year in April 22, which further increased to 19.6% in May 22, highest since August 21. During first quarter 23, the manufacturing PMI increased to 54.7 in April 22 as compared to 54 in March 22, driven by faster expansion in both new orders and output. However, it is down to 53.9 in June 22. The services PMI increased to 57.9 in April 22 as compared to 53.6 in March 22 and further increased to 59.2 in June 22. The energy market during the quarter faced a crisis globally the heat wave in various parts of the world and war and Ukraine war appended the global energy markets. The increase in demand coupled with rising input costs led to high electricity prices in the market. For example, in Australia, wholesale prices rose 2.5 times in the first half of 2022. Similarly, in North Pole market, average wholesale prices for the first half of 2022 were 2.7 times than those in the year, year earlier. And in Japan, average price of electricity doubled on a year-to-year basis. And this all caused by increase in prices of imported coal by almost about 2.5 times and in increase in the LNG price by more than two times. A similar situation prevailed in India. Electricity consumption in quarter one of FY2023 increased to 401 billion units translating into 18% year-on-year growth on account of increased industrial activity and heat wave across the country. However, there were supply-side constraints on exchange rate form. Domestic coal was mainly supplied to PPA-based plants to meet demand. Availability of e oxygen coal reduced, increasing e oxygen price by 400%. There was a significant increase in both imported coal and gas price. As a result of this, Generation from imported coal-based plants and gas-based plants also reduced. The increase in electricity consumption and skyrocketing of input costs led to an increase in the price on the exchange platform. The average day high market prices increased to rupees 7.7 .7 per unit during the quarter. As on 30th June 2022, the total installed capacity of power generation in the country stood at 404 gigawatt out of which the renewable capacity is at 161 gigawatt, 
which contributes almost 40 percent of the installed capacity. The growing contribution of renewable energy is aligned to India's commitment of 400 gigawatt from renewable by 2030, made by our Honorable Prime Minister in COP26 summit held in November 21 at Glasgow. <clears throat> On the regulatory and policy front, several, several developments have taken place. A few highlights are. CRP has issued order on 7th of June 2022 approving the bus awaited long duration contracts for trading up to a period of three months. These contracts are called term and market contracts. This will facilitate the discounts to cater the demand for long duration within the short term market and optimize their procurement cost. This will increase market share of exchanges in the overall market, power market. CRP issued connectivity and general Network access to the interstate transmission system regulation 2022 on 7th of June 2022. This will streamline transmission charges being paid by the market participants and simplify obtaining transmission access for carrying out transactions. GNA will personalize transmission charges for exchange transactions and will further promote deepening of market. Subsequently, on 11th June 2022, CRC issued draft regulations for sharing of ISPS charges and losses to ensure avoidance of duplication of transmission charges in collective exchange transactions. On 6 June 2022, Ministry of Power issued electricity rules for promoting renewable energy through green energy open access. As per the rules, consumers with contracted demand of 100 kilowatt and above is eligible for green energy open access. Certain lectures on own open access related charges also have been provided in, to the consumers. For green open access, there is no additional surcharge and even the cross subsidy surcharge base has been capped to 50% for the year in which open access is granted for a period of 12 years. This move will not only incentivize the consumers to go green, but also improve participation of these consumers in the exchange market. On 3rd June 2022, MOP notified late payment surcharge and related matters rules 2022. The key highlights of these uh, rules are all distribution licenses to intimate their schedule for power draw on day head basis from the generating companies with whom they have a PPS. And thereafter, the generating company will have the option to sell the unrepositioned power in the power market. Same has been captured by CRC in the draft grid code also. If the discounts doesn't establish payment security mechanism or continues to default for a period of 30 days from expiry of the notice, the GENCOs are, can sell 100% of the power to the power market. These regulations will help increase sell side liquidity on the power exchange and will be highly useful for market development. On 9th of May 2022, CRC issued terms and conditions for trade of renewable energy certificate. This will create fungibility of RICs issued irrespective of type of renewable technology and will provide flexibility to the RIC generators to sell their power in the green market or in the dam market and take RIC. These initiatives are aimed at creating an efficient power market and will lead to further deepening of depending of the exchange market in the country. The quarter began on a challenging note at IX and uh, we witnessed uh, high input cost and capacity outages across the country due to shortage of coal. This led to a reduction in sell side liquidity on IX. In day head market, we witnessed purchase base of almost 25.877 BUs while the sell bids were only 17.287 views, leading to an increased clearing price of 7.7 .7 rupees per unit during the quarter and reduction in clearing volume to 11.283 BU in the day head market. Despite these challenges, in Q1 of FY23, the total volume at IX stood at 23.352 BUs, a 10% year on year increase from 21.265 BU a year ago. The conventional power market contributed 
20.635 BU consisting of DAG volume of 11.283 BU which reduced by 21% whereas the RPM market the volume was 6.237 BU which increased by 34.5% on year to year basis and the time market volume was 3.116 BU which increased by 127%. Increase in volume was primarily driven by increase in electricity consumption in states like Uttar Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh, Punjab, Haryana, and Telangana. The green market segments contributed 1.52 billion units, and the REC market contributed 11.97 lakh certificates, which is equivalent to 1.197 BU. I am delighted to share that on 27 June 2022, we have successfully launched a much awaited long duration contracts on the exchange platform. We have introduced any day single side contracts, daily and monthly contracts up to 90 days. This will help us augment our presence in the short term market. Our customer centricity is at the core. At IEX, our endeavor has always been to advance and strengthen exchange technology and introduce innovative products and services to provide the best in class experience to our customers. In this regard, during the quarter, we launched the web based bidding platform to provide our customers anytime, anywhere, easy and secure access to the trading system. Web based financial reconciliation for our customers, enabling online and easy way of reconciliation of the exchange based transactions. And Application programming interface facilitating automated bidding in the integrated day hand market, renewable market, and other segments. I will now briefly touch upon developments regarding the gas market at IEX. In quarter one of FI23, IGX traded 4.7 million MLBTU in volumes and recorded number of trades. This is despite a massive increase in gas price. On an average during the quarter, the flat WIM prices per MMBTU X the hair terminals increased to $32.6 per MMBTU from $9.4 per MMBTU a year ago. Also, we added four new members into IJX including Opal, HPCL, Shell, and DSPC. Taking the total number of registered members to 30, IGX achieved a profit of 1.5 crore during the quarter as compared to a loss of 1.52 crore during quarter 1 of FI22. During the quarter, IGX received PNGR, PNGRB approval to commence domestic gas trading. This approval will lead to new opportunity for sale of domestic gas and price discovery through exchange market besides increasing the sale of sell side liquidity. It gives me immense pleasure to announce that recently IGX was conferred with the Best Energy Startup of the Year Award in the non-renewable category at the ET, Award, ET Energy Leadership Award 2022. I will now come to the financial and business performance for the year for the quarter 1 FY23. On a consolidated basis, revenue for quarter 1 FY23 increased to 113.4 crores from 102.9 crores in the first quarter of the last year. Witnessing a growth of 10%, the PAC grew from 62.1 crore to 69.1 crore with a growth of 11% on year, year on year basis. The key highlights of quarter one of IFI 23 included IX achieved 10% year on year volume growth across all segments. The conventional electricity market achieved 2% growth with a total volume of 20.635 BU, out of which day head market constituted 11.283 BU, term head market 3.116 BU, and real time market 6.236 BU. The green market achieved 62% year on year growth with a total volume of 1.52 BU, of which the green term head market constituted 0.445 BU and the green day had market constituted 1.075 BU. And we traded 11.97 lakh RICs during the year, which is equivalent to 1.197 BU. 
The quarter moon by has witnessed an unprecedented energy crisis. Going forward, we expect the energy crisis to ease with the initiatives taken by the government and regulators, an increase in the coal production by TIL and softening of input costs. At IEX, we are now working to commence other market segments such as ancillary markets, capacity markets, cross-bidding contracts, and are optimistic about commencing them shortly. In quarter one of FY23, we witnessed a significant 11% year-on-year growth in the overall electricity consumption in the country. And if the growth continues like this, I am sure we will be able to maintain the growth momentum what we have seen in the past. Our endeavor is to continuously innovate, strengthen technology, and introduce new market segments and products to help the market participants meet their dynamic requirement. We are also continuously assessing our new opportunities to diversify. With that, I shall conclude by thanking all of you, and we will commence with the question and session now. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Mrs. Sumit Kishore from Access Capital Limited. Please go ahead. So my first question is that months to date electricity volumes on IEX in July are down over 10% year on year. Uh, HPX started with uh, TAM volumes for 6th of July uh, and, and PXIL has gained some market share compared to previous years in the first quarter of FY23. Could you please speak about the competitive landscape, uh, the likely impact of uh, RPM and DAM launch by HPX uh, in, in coming days? That's my first question. Yeah, SPA has started operation from 6th of July, and uh, they have only started one segment, which is they had contingency market. Uh, they had contingency market is a place where you have continuous price matching. So in this market, uh, volumes transacted are lower. If you see. Uh, DSC market volume is uh, hardly about 15-16% uh, of the total volume. So out of that 15-16%, yes, they have been able to get almost about 17% uh, of the volume. And uh, PXIL also, I mean, uh, during the quarter because uh, there was very high price discovered on the exchange platform in the day-head market, and even at 12 rupees price cap, also many of the distribution companies were not able to get power because of the pro, uh, the cap is by 12 rupees. And uh, to avoid that, so many distribution companies started doing transactions in the time market so that uh, they have assurance of getting power on weekly and daily basis, day at basis. So many transactions shifted in the day head market, it is uh, time market. And in the TAM market, as you know, that it is a, not a price discovery, it is a price matching. So all exchanges are at par, and uh, maybe some of the exchanges had given some promotional scheme they had introduced because of that they could get some volume. But uh, we, I can tell you one thing, that uh, in the first quarter, our uh, market share has been almost about 85%, and in the month of July, we are maintaining a market share of almost about 89%. Okay. Uh, just to follow up on uh, this point, uh, we understand that HPX is also going to launch uh, products equivalent to their market or real-time market uh, in the coming days, and they count uh, among their shareholders, entities like Haryana, West Bengal, Manikaran, does that, uh, uh, you know, mean that, uh, 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 you know, although you have the dominant market share in DAM and RTM, is it possible that competition can chip away uh, on market share? Let them launch these products. I think uh, uh, then only we can say anything because PXIL also has both these products. They had DAM and 
uh, uh, RTM, and yeah. they also have uh, important uh, market players as a shareholder. So, in spite of that, uh, we have been maintaining our lead in this market segments. So, I will not like to comment anything till we see their performance in these segments. But uh, you know, as an exchange platform, what we have to do is do something to provide value to our customers. Do innovation, to add new products, provide a robust technology platform. And that is what we have been doing. I think in the last two years, the kind of new developments, new products, and uh, new customer-centric activities which we have carried out, I think uh, with all that, we should be able to retain our market share. Fair point. My second question is, uh, what is the pricing discipline uh, that you are seeing by competition? Uh, we understand that DXI has been offering incentives on the four price uh, in 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 term ahead market and REC is is HPX2 is the same or and uh, if at all is IEX planning to uh, you know follow suit or are you already providing incentives in RECs? We have no such plan in the electricity market. Okay. Okay. Last question, uh, you know, uh, that there has been a launch of uh, the long duration contracts, uh, you know, finally. Uh, so what is the initial uh, uh, experience and what is the expectation for the balance fiscal in terms of adoption of LDCs? Is the financial health of discoms uh, going to be, uh, you know, a sort of a roadblock in, in getting them uh, on board for uh, uh, contracts where, uh, you know, they are in the habit of not paying up uh, in, in the normal payment period, um, how, how would uh, working capital work out? See, we launched this long duration contracts uh, from 27th of June, and we are seeing a lot of interest in this market segment. We have done a couple of uh, reverse options also, uh, but uh, only problem is uh, today in the market, uh, Coal availability in the in the auction space is very very less. Last year, I think coal auction was about 28 million ton, whereas this year it was only about 9 million ton. So that's the price in the e-auction market was 400 times. So, so the rate which is being quoted by the generator in this long duration contract for fast segment is pretty high, of the order of six seven eight rupees. And distribution companies are not uh, willing to enter into a purchase agreement for two, three months at this high price. So because they have apprehensions maybe that the price may come down. So in the day ahead market, yes, I mean, since that is the last opportunity for them to buy power, they buy power at this rate. But in the term ahead market, they are not willing to get into contract at this high rate. So no transactions have materialized, but we are getting interest. And as far as the uh, Payment is concerned, I don't see any issue. Okay. You know, in 2008, when we started our day had market, at that time also the health of the distribution companies was in fact worse than what it is today. And that time also nobody was comfortable that distribution companies would make advanced payments, but they did it because mm -hmm. they found value in the day had market. They found value in the exchange transactions. So here also in the long duration contracts, if they find competitive price discovery happening, I'm sure payment will not be an issue. Well, thank you so much for those answers. Uh, operator, please take the next question. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mohit Kumar from DAM Capital. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, sir, and congratulations on a decent set of uh, numbers. Uh, so my first question is, uh, does in your opinion the late payment surcharge rules to schedule distribution companies by 10 a.m. is likely to be a very, very uh, material event in in medium term for our, our volumes, yeah. Yes, yes, I, I, I can tell you one thing that this can be a big booster for the day had market because uh, if you look at the uh, power of this uh, central generating companies, it is almost about 80,000 megawatt. And out of that, the power which is unrequisitioned 
even if it is 2-3%, then also it can be almost about 20 billion units. That's the rough estimate which I made. And if that kind of power comes to the day had market, I think it can give a lot of, it can provide a lot of liquidity. Understood, sir. Secondly, on this, sir, on the ancillary, ancillary market, cross bidding, capacity market, which are the uh, which are the things? Is there any timeline which you can share with us where you think this this all these three can be implemented? And uh, and as far I understand, there is no regulation of capacity market as of now. Is that understanding correct? Yeah. See, ancillary market CRC has already issued regulations, but that will be implemented after uh, finalization of the grid code which may take another uh, two, three months' time. Uh, gross bidding, we have already filed our petition with CRC. CRC hearing has happened. They are, wanted us to do the stakeholder consultation. We did that and find, filed our uh, submissions with CRC on that. So the order is reserved. We are working with CRC to, for the approval of that. So, I'm, I mean, we should get approval, I think, in the next one or two months. And third is capacity market. Capacity market is a new concept I mean, in, for India. I mean, it is there in the European market. But in India, we are working with government also. We are working with regulators. And uh, I understand the new electricity policy, which is uh, under finalization and under approval, uh, is talking about this uh, capacity concept. And uh, this concept is being discussed uh, to have uh, adequate resource planning in the country. So I'm sure if you want to have deepening of short-term market, you need capacity market also in the country. So this is, you can say, the concept stays, and uh, it, will, it may take some time. So what is the revenue of IGX in Q1 FI23? Only revenue number? Uh, we need just... So. IGX operating revenue was 3. Point, almost 4 crores, 3.9 crores. 3.9 crores. Understood. So thank you and best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Maheshwari from Edelweiss. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thanks for the opportunity. So my first question is uh, there was uh, the CRC uh, on on your uh, two pesa transaction fees, they had asked you to justify uh, the transaction fees. So where are we uh, in terms of that? We have submitted our petition with CRC, and uh, hearing was held. So we are expecting that uh, order should come in another one month time. Okay, so the order is reserved. Yes, order is. Order is not reserved. Uh, one of the party had uh, requested uh, time for making their submissions, and CRC allowed them to make submissions within the next 15 days. So they have made the submissions. So we have to now respond to their submissions, and after that, uh, CRC may hold one more hearing, and then they will issue the order. All right. And sir, where are we in terms of uh, gross bidding? Uh, you had uh, launched that new product, uh, which is uh, more. Uh, okay, the individual level. So, how we are progressing on the gross bidding mechanism? See, for any new product, you know, there are many if and but. So, yeah. we filed with the regulator. Regulator is also analyzing all aspects of it, and they requested us to do stakeholder consultation. We discuss with the stakeholders also. Uh, they understand that yes, they can get some value out of it. But uh, looking at uh, what distribution companies are. I mean, uh, I think only when we implement this product, maybe we'll get some response from them. Otherwise, they are quite positive about this product. So we have filed our submissions with CRC, and let's see when we get the approval. It's a new concept, so it will take some time. Got it. Uh, can we expect that in FI23, sir? Yes, yes, yes. We are ready to launch it. Okay, okay. Okay, sir, in terms of financial question, uh, we have seen uh, there is a sharp increase in other expenses uh, in this quarter. So, any one-off over there? Yeah, Mr. Vineet, hello, can I uh, Mainly, there are two factors. If you look at the considerable number on year-on-year -year basis, uh, the increase is around 
2.7 crores. This is mainly because of the CSR, because the CSR expenses increase almost 2.5 crores. Uh, because this is our statutory obligation. Last time it was spread over the two, three quarters, and this time because we incurred the expenses of this all were booked. And secondly, if you can recall, during the quarter one of financial year 22, because of the COVID second wave, so no activities were being taken over, so like traveling, business development, and other activities. So now it is fully functional. So these two are the major impacts. Uh, I think the CSR was the major impact on the increase in the cost in this quarter. Okay. Sir, my, my last question, if, if you just look at your cash and cash equivalents, including the liquid investments, it's almost up 80%. It's almost about 1250 odd crores. And that's kind of a drag on the ROEs as well. I'm pretty sure that there are some security deposits included in that. Uh, even if you were to adjust, uh, that's a very significant amount of your, your balance sheet size now. How do we plan to deploy this? I mean, are we just going to sit on cash or is there some plan over there? Uh, it is basically, if you look into the amount of three annual course, these are the basically the deposit amount or the float which we receive for the pain or obligation. Uh, because of the sudden increase in the pain because of the higher prices, so this is float we have to maintain because we have the payout obligation. Uh, so it's not an amount which we are lying with because whatever the amount surplus here, it is already invested. Uh, so amount which are lying there substantially are put into the FDs and other things. So we are looking and taking care of the, all the investments which are there. Shoulder funds around 668 crores. Yeah, so we have almost about 670 crore rupees of shareholders' money. And out of that, uh, we are going to pay dividend, which will be about uh, 90 crore rupees. So that will leave almost about 570 crore rupees with us. So that is the money for which we can look for uh, I mean, investment options. We are working on few invest, I mean, opportunities, new options, new diversification initiatives. So as and when that's materialized, maybe we'll need some money for that. And even otherwise, also, I think we need maybe 150 to 200 crore rupees for the IEX day-to-day -day operations also. Uh, all right, sir. Uh, that's it from my side. Uh, wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. The next question is from the line of Nikhil Nigania from Alliance Bernstein. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, hi, sir. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, my first question is regarding power supply. So as you mentioned, uh, supply has been less than the demand in the exchange in the first quarter. And going forward, if you see most of the power plants coming up are either on the thermal side, they are either NTPC state government plants. Or on the private side, they are renewable power plants, which are typically locked in PPAs. So given that, how do you see the uh, exchange sustaining strong volume growth uh, uh, going forward, given the supply uh, being locked in PPAs, future supply? Sir? Yeah, see, on exchange platform, there are two types of sellers. One is distribution companies themselves sell power because they have surplus on real-time basis, depending on the demand and supply position. And uh, there are cases when they have uh, PPAs, capacities, foreign access of their demand. And if the exchange clearing price is reasonable, they sell power on the exchange platform. In fact, last year, the sell by distribution company was more than 50%. And uh, then we have generating companies which sell power. So on the generation side also, we have uh, almost about uh, 10,000 kind of megawatt capacity which is there in the merchant route available. And earlier, uh, even the imported coal-based power plants were also participating because imported coal prices were lower. So that is another 10,000 megawatt capacity. So capacity-wise, I don't see any challenge. Only problem is now e auction rates have increased and imported coal prices have increased. So that is why Generating companies selling power at high price and uh, prices, clearing prices are high, and that is why the clearing volume is also uh, slightly lower. Got sir. Uh, my second question is uh, on the competition uh, landscape, competitive landscape. Uh, this question came up earlier uh, regarding uh, transaction charges on the exchange uh, from the competition. Uh, so on this, there was one filing by the Hindustan Power Exchange to CERC, 
requesting for uh, permission to give volume link discounts uh, in transaction charges. Uh, and please excuse my understanding. What I could see is even IEX had filed uh, a request for liberty of liberty to charge anything up to two pesa uh, on the platform. Uh, so how do you see this evolving and uh, uh, going forward if PTC were to give volume link dis discount to its customers? You said the PTC starts giving volume discount? PTC is exchange, Hindustan Power Exchange, yeah. PTC exchange, okay. That is a Hindustan Power Exchange. I yeah. think we should correct that that is not PTC exchange, that is exchange which is promoted by BSC, PTC and ICICI. Okay. And, and PTC is not trading there because PTC cannot trade there as per the regulations. Anyhow, so coming back to your question, okay, they are a new exchange, they are giving uh, promotional discounts, I don't know how long they will continue, uh, as per the market reports I understand they have, they intend to give there for the first 21 days and after that for uh, 3 months uh, maybe some further discount, we don't want to get into this. We'll continue, we'll continue to maintain our uh, transaction fees, what we have been charging. And I think uh, the values which we provide to the participants, we'll continue to work on that. And I'm sure that will help us in retaining our, retaining our market share. Got it, understood. I think that's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ankush Agarwal from Surge Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thank you for taking my question. So, firstly, uh, can you talk about uh, the derivative segment? Like, uh, when should we expect that? Uh, would it be once we get substantial volume on the long duration contracts, or we will begin it uh, without that? Derivative contracts will be launched by the commodity exchanges. Yeah, yeah, but uh, since we have partners, so we would have some expectation as to when uh, it would be launched. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. I mean, there is a joint working group. The joint working group have to uh, approve that contract because, uh, you know, we have a spot market in electricity, so that contract should not have any adverse impact on the spot market. And particularly mm -hmm. during this kind of uh, turbulent condition, uh, I think uh, for the time being, uh, that product has not been approved so far, but then uh, maybe in the next two, three months, we may see approval of that. So we may see derivatives in the electricity market. And that should help also some volume in the long duration contracts. Right. Because that will provide some visibility to the market participants. Right. So secondly, on the overall pricing thing, uh, uh, would it be possible for you to share, you know, what kind of uh, transaction fee uh, uh, Hindustan Power Exchange is charging currently? On? Um, for, for what? What kind Hello. of transactions they are charging? Mr. Agarwal, can you please repeat your question? Yeah, my question was, uh, would it be possible for you to share what kind of transaction fee, the lower transaction fee that uh, Hindustan Power Exchange is charging currently? I, I understand they have issued a circular, and uh, my okay. colleague Mr. Rohit Bajaj will respond to this. So their uh, transaction fee is uh, same. They okay. they have approval to charge two pesa on either side, but yeah. they have come out with a promotional scheme wherein they are saying for first 21 days. They are mm -hmm. giving complete waiver. It is going to end because it started on 6. Yeah, 21 days it is complete waiver. And then for next one or two months, they are giving some 10 20 percent sort of a discount on the transaction fee. This is what we understand. Okay, so for the first 21 days, there is no transaction fee, and then for next one, two months, you are giving 20 percent discount. Something like that 10 20 percent of discount yeah. over transaction fee. Yeah. Right. So, sir, historically, based on, you know, PXIL uh, was there, so what kind of effect we have seen this play out, you know, lower transaction fee, does, does that attract volumes? Like, uh, historically, based on if PXIL would have given such kind of discounts historically, have you seen that attracting volumes? No. So, we have, uh, in fact, uh, other exchange has also adopted these practices in the past. 
right. and uh, they have restarted their day and market multiple times but uh, right. we have been maintaining very good very decent market share and we hope that the kind of value that we are providing to our customers the kind of liquidity we have kind of participant base we have kind of uh, robust pricing that we have competitive pricing i think these are yes. the elements which are more important than this small discount that other exchanges are considering in the past also they could not succeed because of this and going forward also we are hopeful that we would be able to maintain our market share and won't have to cut down on that transaction fee right uh got it got got it that was also thank you thank, thank you. you the next question is from the line of varanai vijaya kumar from spark capital please go ahead yeah uh, good evening uh, am i audible yeah. yes yeah so this is varani vijay kumar so uh, my first question is on uh, the market share you had mentioned uh, 85% in the first quarter and 89 in the month of july so uh, i presume it is in the tam market am i right sir no, our share is uh, almost about 85% in the first quarter it is for all products taken together Uh, we have electricity market consisting of dam g dam rtm dam g dam everything to come together that okay. electricity market and you can't talk about one one particular product okay sure and in tam you had mentioned the uh, the new entrant had garnered around uh, 17% yes that is on the dse that in that in tam also there are multiple products like uh, intra day day had contingency week daily contracts weekly contracts but they have only lost day had contingency market and in okay. that they have 17% market share okay okay uh, coming to our uh, sell uh, sell bids in uh, 1q fy23 can you share the proportion of sell bids from uh, discoms and gencos separately for this quarter and the same quarter last year Yeah, for discounts, uh, the sell bid is also uh, from discounts. The sell bid is about uh, 65 percent, and uh, from generator, it is about uh, from discount 56 percent, and from generator about 44 percent. This was last year. Okay. Okay. This year, from discounts, it is 46 percent, and from generator, okay. it is 54 percent because uh, there was a high demand on discount with discounts. So, yeah. Yeah, obviously the supply situation was tight, so discoms you know did not have uh, surplus power. Okay. And on the uh, buy buy side, what is the percentage of open access, sir? Open access volumes have re- reduced significantly. Open access volume is just about four percent now. Four percent, oh. which is the industrial consumers, and then another six percent by the captive industries like uh, Vedanta, Astra Mittal, and Balco, like that. So you can say total about ten percent. Okay, this obviously because the prices have increased. So yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. One final question. Mr. So, Baran, I I would request you to join. Uh, I mean, for join the queue again because there are many participants who are waiting for their turn. I'm so sorry. Yeah, please continue with this. Let's Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management will be able to answer questions from the participants in the conference, please limit your questions to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, please rejoin the queue. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ankur Agarwal from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. uh um, just wanted to check about the sell side liquidity issues that you mentioned during the quarter um if you can share some developments compared to the previous quarters and what was the situation during this quarter and how do we see it evolving because there is understand when coal availability issues were there also earlier and now probably going forward we could probably see a continued uh, uh availability issues there so how do you see the situation over the next couple of quarters panning out and situation is continuing only thing is the clearing price uh, have reduced slightly uh, because of monsoon the demand has reduced so clearing price uh, has come down but on sell side uh, still the price being quoted by the generators is high because the purchase cost for the coal is quite high 
So when they buy coal at a E option price, the variable cost is itself about five, 5 rupees plus for them. And that is why on the sell side we are seeing still challenge. And so these are uh, mostly uh, the imported coal based plants or? No, no, no. These are all domestic coal based plants. Domestic. Imported coal based plants variable cost is 8 rupees plus 5. Okay. And over the next quarter, we do see uh, some volume impact coming because of See, the production of coal has improved. It has increased. So coal stock position also has improved now. So maybe, you know, most of the states and generating companies are keeping coal to meet the demand of the month of, you know, September, October are two critical months. But uh, thereafter, I'm 100% sure that the supply situation will improve and you will see good liquidity on exchange platform also. Okay. And so second question uh, was on the employee expenses. On a sequential basis, we saw a significant decline. Uh, is there any particular reason for that or is there any dynamic that you would like to share on that? Thank you. Uh, uh, because if you look at in comparison to the June 30, 2022 financially 22 versus financially 23 on year on year basis, uh, there are two factors which are declining. One is because the last year numbers included the IGX manpower. Because now IGX numbers are not consolidated on the balance sheet basis being associate company. So around one and a half core impact is that only. And second, because there was some structural change into the CTC structure, so some impact was there during the June quarter last year. And overall this year, because of the few attritions, so the cost was lower. So these are the impact on year on year basis. And if you look at the quarter to quarter, we see the decline because there was a one time expenses because of the variable pay adjustment because of the uh, significant higher volume during the last year. So that time, one way, one time cost was booked during the March quarter. Okay. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Lavanya from UBS. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, I just wanted to know your uh, opinion on uh, implementation of market coupling and MBD. Do you see any potential implementation of market coupling without uh, MBD happening? I haven't heard this topic in the market from the last uh, seven, eight months, I think. <laughs> uh, uh, so story is, this story is over. Nobody is talking about it now. Okay, both MBD and market coupling, right? You see, market coupling makes sense only when MBD is implemented. Right. And that is how the discussion paper of the Government of India, which was issued to CRC, also mentioned that the first phase of MBD, where the generic stations of the CPSUs were covered, that was without market coupling. And based on the experience of phase one implementation, if they want to extend it to the states also, then maybe market coupling can be considered. But even phase one itself is difficult to implement. You know, under the kind of situation which took place in the month of March, April, May, mm -hmm. world over energy markets are under review. Australia, they suspended the energy market operations for two weeks. UK, they are looking at the market design now, re-looking at the market design now. So in India, our situation was much better mainly because we had uh, almost about 85% of the demand for the PPL. So there was no abnormal increase in the cost. So I think uh, our market model is, uh, from that point of view, working very well. So we have to slowly increase the liquidity in the short-term market so that market participants also get used to that. Got it, got it. So uh, one more thing on uh, long to long duration contracts. So uh, there is a difference in price discovery of long duration contracts. So can you just help me understand how is it different from our traditional previous uh, term ahead price discovery? In the term ahead, uh, we had uh, matching contracts also and open option also. Mm -hmm. uh, now in the term ahead market, the matching option has been discontinued by CRC, so it is going to be only open option. And uh, another concept is now reverse auction. 
reverse option the way the price used to get discovered on the deep platform the same mechanism is also now being approved for exchange transactions for long duration contracts okay thank you if i may squeeze in last question what is the open access uh, users uh, contribution i mean volume contribution previously and how is it now it is around 4% is what you highlighted how was it before when situations were not i think it was about 11% uh, last last year this during the first quarter 12% oh. okay and captive captive is you know that the 4 5 percent the captive come to the market because if they are not getting coal then they come to the market last year the coal supply situation was not bad so captive contribution was less got it got it thank you thank you so much sir thank you the next question is from the line of shri kartik v from investec please go ahead um hi sir um, quick question uh can you tell us our market share in the dam and rtm segments for the quarter thank you see in the rtm segment uh, we have uh, practically 100% market share in the rtm and in the dam you can say it is uh, 99% yes 99% in the dam also sir uh, uh, one on the uh, stakeholder stance on mbed if you could uh, help us understand where does ntpc the government of india and uh, cerc stand with respect to how they thinking about the implementation that's all thank you i told you from last one year i have not been hearing anything about mbed there are many issues Uh, involved in implementation of mbit and uh, first thing is the consent of the states and what i understand that uh, most of the states are not in favor of mbit because you know at present it is the state who has to arrange supply of power to the consumers of the state under the mbit it becomes a central central dispatch system so states will have no control if they under this this kind of situation there will be many states who are who have supplied power but under mbit maybe they will not be able to supply that kind of reliable power because their share will be taken by somebody else i as of now there is no discussion going on on mbit and i don't think it will get implemented thank you yeah anything else thank you the next question is from the line of dhruv muchal from hdfc mutual fund please go ahead uh hi sir so uh, on the slide uh, 35 if you have uh, mentioned about the late payment surcharge uh, rules where uh, before 10 am by 10 am they have to schedule so what's uh, holding it back i mean the rules are already notified so what steps are required for this to get implemented now see after the see the scheduling of power happens as per the crc regulations only so rules issued by government of india have been considered by crc and in the draft agreed for they have included this provision that generating companies shall yeah distribution companies shall keep their draw schedule by by 9:00 9 o'clock okay so once the draft code is uh, confirmed only then these rules will be yes, enforceable yeah you are right. oh, okay got it got it and sir uh, okay so any any sense uh, uh, this is in the draft stage right now so after that is the public hearing and then the final regulations will come yes. is that okay yes and sir the second question is uh, on the ldc um, uh, market design so you mentioned uh, currently i believe for tam market you are following the open auction mechanism and you are also planning to implement the reverse auction as per crc uh, and sir currently the dam market is what design See, for the tam market we have already implemented the reverse auction okay. and we have also carried out a couple of reverse auctions for the dam market it is a double sided closed closed auction hmm okay 
Hmm. But sir, isn't the regulator allowing a double-sided closed close auction in LDC, uh, LDC market? Double-sided closed auction is effective in a market where there is a very high liquidity. So, in case of uh, our dam market, we have uh, almost about uh, seven, eight hundred participants participating. Where you have more than two hundred generators sell side. Uh, participants and 600 buy side participants. So there is effective price discovery which can take place. Uh, if you adopt this kind of a model in a long duration contract where the participants are uh, two, three, then mm -hmm. price discovery will not happen. So that is why open, open option is normally adopted for that kind of a situation. Perfect. Open option or reverse option. Perfect. That's very helpful. Sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of S. Ramesh from Nirmal Bang Equities. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon and thank you very much. Um, can you share some thoughts on how your uh, gas exchange is performing and how you see the gas trading volumes uh, pick up this year, especially given that gas prices have gone up sharply compared to last year. So how, you, how do you see that impacting volume and how do you see the prospects for the volume say over the next two, three years? See, under these difficult conditions, a gas exchange, I will say, that has done very well. Uh, their volume during the last uh, year has increased every quarter, and uh, they did uh, almost about uh, one crore 20 lakh MMBTU. And uh, we did a turnaround in the first year of operation itself. So that was a wonderful thing, I must say. And now also, and you know the gas market conditions. So in spite of very high price of $30, $35, in spite of the fact that LNG uh, import is not happening in that big way, still uh, they are doing decent volume. And in the first quarter, we have made a profit of uh, 1.15 1. crore after meeting all the expenses. So, and then July month is also so far they have done good volume. So I'm sure there is good opportunity in the gas exchange. And I personally believe that uh, if the gas prices come down to six, seven dollars, which used to remain earlier, and then uh, the opportunity for the gas exchange is as big as what we are doing in the electricity exchange. Oh, that's very interesting. So, if you were to, you know, uh, you know, extend this to the energy saving certificates, and you know, India's progress towards, you know, green transition. Uh, how do you see your power exchange and the gas exchange together, you know, uh, playing an active role in terms of helping uh, both the generators as well as the uh, users of energy uh, use trading to, you know, meet their renewable energy requirements and also, you know, develop an offset mechanism where they are falling short in terms of uh, reducing the carbon uh, emission objectives. So is there any thought process on that? Can you give us some, uh, you know, thoughts on that? Uh, can you uh, repeat your question and tell me what exactly you want to know about that? Yeah, so in terms of your own, you know, uh, perspective on uh, any of the role Indian Energy Exchange can play both in the power trading as well as gas trading. As we move towards green transition, you're, you're talking about energy saving certificates in one of your slides. Uh, so in terms of the, uh, uh, the longer term uh, role you can play in the uh, country's, you know, transition towards green energy, uh, how okay, do you... Okay. Yeah, I'll tell you. Okay. See, number one, uh, government of India has uh, now, I think, a target of almost about adding 500 gigawatt renewable energy by 2030. And a uh, lot of work is happening for in that area. We are also interacting with many IPPs, many developers for uh, setting up uh, renewable generation capacities through the market mechanism and we are getting a very good response from them. So that is one area. Second area is that uh, even this uh, carbon market is also getting a lot of uh, now uh, traction. And uh, renewable energy certificates and uh, energy saving certificates, which are now being traded, government is thinking of uh, uh, stopping transactions of RECs and uh, ESRs and then they will create a carbon market where these certificates will be converted into carbon credits 
and there is going to be a mandatory carbon market for that. In fact, Bureau of Energy Efficiency is working on that, and we are closely in discussion with the BWE on these issues. So as and when the opportunity is there to launch the carbon market, we will. Uh, we are working on that too, and we will launch that. We will be the first to start that market. Interesting. Thank you very much, and all the best. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Mohit Kumar from DAM Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Hello. Yeah, Mohit. Yes, sir. One, one clarification, sir. But do you think in Kaaba markets, IEX or exchanges will have exclusive role to play, or do you think the OTC will open to the OTC markets also? Can't say. I mean, it depends on what kind of market design is government adopting. So it all depends on that. Okay. So when do you think the clarity will emerge on this uh, this carbon dating market? Then, why, in your opinion? Uh, by this financial year end, something should happen because government is working on formulating rule of the game, and BWE also has appointed a consultant now to work out the market design. Understood, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, and all the best, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ravi Naredi from Naredi Investment. Please go ahead. Thank you very much to give me the opportunity. Sir, when exchange will have new MD or chairman as both post held by same person, as new exchange are coming, so aggressive role of MD now need. That is the, my question. And I have total regard of uh, MD at present. I couldn't get your question. <laughs> Sir, exchange, exchange have CMD, one person only. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I would like to know when the chairman or MD will be separate as new actions are coming and new aggression is need in the exchange of IEX. Okay, I mean your, your your suggestion is that we should separate the chairman and managing director position. Yes, previously previously it was separate only. Yeah, when yeah, the MD yeah. resigned, you have taken over the as a chairman come MD. That is the my point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, see. Uh, I'm sure you are aware of why it happened, because uh, after my first term of the MD, I was continuing as a non-executive chairman of the company, and right. since suddenly, so to ensure continuity of the business, I took over as the CMD of the company. Right, and right. We are we are working on the succession planning, and uh, company has a plan of, for the new MD also. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And uh, this uh, is a new exchange is coming. What strategy we are making to compete with them? See, as I told you, as an exchange, we have to provide value to our customers. We right. have to innovate. We have to launch new products. We have to understand the requirement of the customers and design the products to meet their requirements. Right. We have to continuously interact with them, understand their problems, suggest them, tell them how exchange can provide benefit to them. And that is something which we are doing. If you look at the developments which have taken place in the last two years, the kind of new products which we have launched on the exchange market, right. and our customer-centric initiatives which we have done in the last two years. Right. Uh, Technology platform, the new developments which we have done on this platform. Uh, I'm sure uh, my colleague Mr. Amit is here, and uh, I'll request him to brief about uh, some of the initiatives which you have taken. Okay, okay. Yeah, thank you. Um, so we have launched multiple uh, initiatives to improve the experience that customers get from our platform. Uh, some of the key ones have been uh, automated building through application programming interface. Um, then uh, web-based platform, um, financial reconciliation through uh, web-based um, uh, systems, uh, auto carry forward of beds from one segment to another so that it eliminates the, uh, reduces the manual effort to transfer beds from one segment to another. Um, so these are some of the uh, 
important uh, customer centric initiatives that we have implemented and many more we are working upon to ensure that customers uh, experience with our platform continuously improves and they get best in class experience with our platform okay okay thank you thank you the next question is from the line of ankush agrawal from search capital please go ahead yeah. so thank you for the opportunity again so uh, can you talk a little bit about in terms of you know uh, the pricing that we are looking for the cross betting contracts and we always maintain that uh, there would be some discounts we would be offering so can you talk a little bit about that and also you know uh, with this uh, discounted pricing that we will uh, do in the cross betting uh, do you think uh, that will open up you know uh, situations wherein you know the end uh, clients of ia could be uh, looking for the same kind of pricing in the other segments as well yeah so yes we are in fact we have mentioned in the past that when the gross bidding thing will be introduced we might have a different pricing for that we have not yet decided because it is still little away from implementation approval is awaited from regulator once we have that approval we will do just to answer your second question where you have raised concern if we are going to give discounting price in gross gross bidding yeah. then uh, the in the real electricity segment also there could be pressure on the pricing i don't think yeah. that will happen because when we are asking anybody in fact when we are convincing any distribution company to go for gross bidding we are asking him to put buy as well as sell on our platform today what they are doing is they are placing their bid on net basis so how much yeah. Uh, deficit they have or how much surplus they have they place bid only for that when we are asked, requesting them for gross bidding then they are placing their sell also and corresponding buy also they are placing at our platform so we cannot treat both the things on the at the same level we have to differentiate and we don't think that it can cause any impact on our pricing on the regular pricing on the different electricity segments where we are trading now yeah uh so the thought the thought process that i had over here, over here was that this is uh, on the cross bidding it, it is basically you know uh, volume based discount there someone was thinking much more volumes in liquidity uh, so we will be providing discount so the thought over here is uh, in the regular market if there is some client say something like ntpc or all that who might have a very large volumes something like ptc you know who brings uh, very decent volumes to our exchange so in that case you know maybe they might also be of the thought you know since we are also bringing a lot of volume should we also qualify for uh, you know some kind of discount we are not talking about anything volume based discount to give you an example we yeah. today if a state has 25000 megawatt pcs mm -hmm. and the demand is 20000 megawatt what okay. and out of the 25000 megawatt when we the 20 22000 megawatt capacity is available what we are saying is ki if your base load demand is 18000 megawatt for rest of the 4000 megawatt sell you put on the exchange platform and 2000 megawatt buy also you put on the exchange platform exchange will do the optimization for you and okay. out of that in a particular time block suppose he has sold 3000 megawatt and bought 2000 megawatt that means on net basis he has sold 1000 megawatt so okay. for this 2000 megawatt which has been sold by him and bought by him the price yes. will be different but for this 1000 yes. megawatt which has been sold by him the price will be normal price which we are charging so it will be basically yes. based on this concept i don't think uh, this has any linkage with the volume volume based discount yes. 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 that, that clarifies it thank you that is thank you the next question is from the line of ankur agrawal from philip capital please go ahead yeah hello sir uh, thank you for the opportunity once again Uh, I just wanted to come back to the sell side liquidity issue. I mean, right now we are seeing some structural increase in the uh, electricity demand in India in terms of the peak capacity, peak demand that we have seen uh, jumping over 211, 210 gigawatt. Um, so, do you see any? I mean, there is no thermal new thermal capacity going to come online. I mean, limited thermal capacity going to come online over the next. Uh, they say five, ten years, and we are focusing more on renewables. So, are you seeing any structural issues with the sell side liquidity that will be uh, that we see foreseed uh, going into the future? And how do you see that panning out? I mean, with limited thermal capacity uh, uh, getting installed. So, yeah, this this year there were a few challenges. Uh, 
partly because of non-availability of coal and very high price of imported coal. But uh, it was felt that uh, whatever coal-based capacity we have, uh, maybe that may not be enough to meet the peak load demand uh, going forward. So what I understand that uh, some of the new projects are being taken up now. Very recently I read in the newspaper and TPC has awarded uh, 13, 20 megawatt uh, new plants and they are working on a couple of more plants. Uh, see, the uh, PLF that we have recorded in first quarter is about 59%. And this is uh, 10 years high PLF. We have never seen this kind of PLF in the past. Yes. Uh, yes. And uh, this was, last year this number was only 54%. So still a lot of capacity which is available which will be utilized going forward as the demand will increase. And if you refer to any of the system operator report, NLDC report, you will find that any given day more than 50,000 megawatt capacity is non-operational. It is not available because of various reasons. So uh, we feel that there is some capacity still available. There is a lot more capacity which is going to come. More than 30,000 megawatt capacity will get commissioned. More than 10,000 megawatt is merchant capacity which is available in the country where the utilization level is very, very low. These, these uh, plants are not operating because the prices most of the time are not conducive. So what we feel that as price pressure will be there, prices will start to rise. More and more and more of this capacity utilization will start and it will increase. Yes, going forward three, four years down the line, two, three years down the line, we might see some shortfall depending on how our demand will increase. But in the near term, near to medium term, uh, we really do not see any major shortfall in the demand. We have sufficient capacity available as well. Okay. The present crisis that we have seen, it is morely, uh, mostly because of coal. So the coal prices were high, imported coal prices were high. Many of them were not buying, uh, not able to buy at that price. And second thing was certainty is also not there. Because when you import coal, it takes about one month uh, by the time you start getting coal and you are not very sure whether after one month also the same price would continue. So I think these are some of the factors which were, which has caused this disruption and the government measures where the coal production has increased now. The supply to the IPPs have also increased now. We are hopeful that in times to come the situation would be much better and supply side constraints will be eased out. Yes, sir. Uh, you are absolutely right about the supply side constraints, uh, but the uh, demand side also we have seen a structural shift. I would, I mean, because uh, uh, because we earlier used to be having a peak demand of somewhere around 180, 185 gigawatts, and now that has jumped uh, to over 200 gigawatts. Of course, I mean the summer heating uh, heat wave has to do uh, had something to do with that, but um, we are also seeing some uh, uh, increase in the demand. So peak demand. So I think the systems like that might be available uh, could be going down. Is that a fair way to look at it also? So when the demand was 211 gigawatt, even at that time also, we had some capacity which was not operating. Right. So I don't, as, as of now, for the next uh, couple of years, I don't see any challenge in that. And uh, as Mr. Rohit mentioned that there is already some capacity which is under construction, which will get commissioned, and maybe some new capacity will be taken up. So, government and CA, they are all working on all these things. Okay. Oh, thank you, sir. Go ahead. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Sumat Kishore from Access Capital Limited for closing comments. Thanks a lot to uh, Goel, sir, and the whole uh, management team at IEX for patiently answering the all questions. Uh, sir, if you have any closing remarks at this point. I would like to thank each one of you for being part of today's call. call. During the quarter, we have seen a lot of initiatives announced by the government and regulator towards creating a favorable policy and regulatory environment and to transform the energy market. We remain committed in doing our bit for building a sustainable and efficient energy future in India. Thank you, friends, and I look forward to our next interaction with you. Till then, wish you all good health and thank you. On behalf of Access Capital Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.